welcome back to the Welsh Premiership Podcast weekly preview review show, sponsored by Lekker Foods Co. Uh, I'm Hayden Evans, today I'm joined by Adam Cleary, obviously no Tobias here today, but uh, we're going to talk through all last weekend's fixtures and look ahead to the fixtures this weekend as well. Um, if you haven't already seen it, then check out our uh, guest podcast this week with Clinetley back rower uh, and uh, skipper this week, isn't he? Uh, Nathan Hart. Uh, played over 100 games for Athlete as well as uh, representing the Swansea. So, um, first of all, then we'll uh, take a look back at last weekend's fixtures. And Adam, I know you and a few of the boys went to uh, Cardiff Arms Park to see Cardiff uh, take on Ebba Vale. So, uh, yeah, what happened in that one? Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, really. Obviously, Cardiff came out on top with a bonus point in the end, but it was really close for the first 55, 60 minutes. Um, and it speaks volumes, I think, of how good Dan Fish really is that, uh, Cardiff were losing after about 55 minutes, brought him on and they won with a bonus point. But yeah, he is obviously an ex-pro and you, you can tell he's, he's just so good. He, he makes it look like he's got so much time on the ball, p- pin people into space and um, yeah, good win for Cardiff and it puts him back on track after a disappointing defeat the week before. Yeah, you obviously you mentioned how important that is for Cardiff, like keeping the pressure on Newport, but do you think Ebervale will be disappointed even though they come up against the top team in Cardiff? And um, I think not many people like gave them much hope going into the game. Do you think they come away with that game disappointed? Obviously, I know discipline costs them again, um, which you spoke to them about after the game. So, yeah, do you think they'll just be disappointed not to have got a result from that game? Yeah, well, it's similar to the week before. I saw them up at Ponty and um, they were in the game, but they had, um, I think they had two or three yellow cards up at Ponty and it was the same this week. Like, you cannot play against teams in the Premiership with 13 players, you've got no chance and, you know, teams will break you down and score points. So they just need to work on their discipline because, they, you know, when they keep 15 on the pitch, you're a really competitive team and uh, you know, they won't be too far away from a win now. Yeah, and I know uh, Jonathan Evans, obviously ex-regional player with the Scarlets and the Dragons as well, was making his debut for Ebu. Um, they've got some real good, like, ex-pros there now. You've got, like, the likes of Reese Jones, who's been been out for a little bit. Um Dav Howells as well. Um, so, yeah, what, what were those ex-pros like? Obviously, you mentioned like Dan Fish for Cardiff as well, but the ones for Ebu and particularly John Evans making his debut. Yeah, well, uh, John Evans actually got a yellow card, but no, apart from that, he, um, no, he played well. And obviously, Dav Howells, I think he was skipper last week. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, he's a good player, Welsh international. And, you know, these ex-pros, they do make a difference. And hopefully now, if they can keep 15 on the field, then... Um, they'll be able to grind out a few wins. Yeah, and obviously we mentioned like the like in a few of the other podcasts, the youngsters they got coming through, particularly like the, the Dragons players, and obviously having them them boys around the squad can only benefit them going forward. Yeah, and obviously they've got a bit of an injury crisis as well, haven't they? So no, they'll come good, I'm sure. Moving on then to the, to the Saturday results then, and we'll stick with the East Conference. And uh, first of all then, it's a bit of a crazy game up at the win, uh, Merthyr versus Ponte. Merthyr came out 61-32 winners. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Obviously, it was close at half-time, wasn't it? But I think second half injuries and um, things like that added up for pa- for Ponty and uh, Merthyr just ran away with it. Um, yeah, you never would have thought there'd be a scoreline like that. 61, was it 61-32? Yeah. yeah it's just a crazy scoreline. Uh, the defence coaches won't be very happy this week, I can imagine. But um, yeah, good win for Merthyr. A bit of a derby as well, but obviously Ponty will be really disappointed. And uh, Bernal went off injured as well, which is a huge blow for them. Yeah, I think it's very different to what most people would have expected going into uh, that derby game. Merthyr Ponty derby is a traditionally uh, very attritional like um, one up front, and um, yeah, to see a scoreline like that is just uh, just amazing, really, in the pre- Premiership, and probably doesn't re- reflect the performance that Ponty put in. Uh, you mentioned they probably won't be too disappointed with, with the scoreline, knowing the fact they had so many injuries, obviously, when your first choice outside half goes off as well, I and mean, Ben Bernal, and we hope, hope that he's all right, it, it, that obviously disrupts the team. So, th- like, they can't really read too much into that result, even though they did lose by 30 points in the end. It, there's not really much you can read into it with a when you have an injury crisis like that. It's just one of them things, isn't it? Yeah, it is just one of those things. And um, they didn't have a fly half on the bench either. So they had to, you know, sort of play players out of position, which wouldn't have helped. But obviously they'll be, they've got a big game coming up this week and um, it's the perfect chance to put things right. Yeah, and obviously I know Merthyr as well. They had the nine um, James Stone squaff uh, injured after a couple of minutes. And uh, 
obviously apologies we got his uh, name wrong in the uh, in our team of the week but Justin James uh, came on for Merthyr and, and put in a good shift I know they were very pleased with him uh, up there as well so moving on to the next game then and potentially a shock but maybe not uh, RGC travelling down to Newport uh, and RGC come away 34-28 winners at Newport Stadium a uh, bit disappointing for Newport obviously they're looking to to go on and win this league title with like Cardiff uh, breathing down their necks uh, it probably looks like Cardiff and Newport will be the top two but RGC putting pressure on and sort of coming good really we mentioned the last few weeks how um, RGC have been putting the pressure on but not managing to uh, to get that win so yeah big win for them what are your thoughts on that one yeah well RGC have been improving recently, week on week. Obviously, we spoke to Kerry the other week and uh, he just spoke about how much they've improved. But I think it still was a shock seeing them go down there and win. Obviously, Newport coming off the back of a, you know, a huge win for them away at Cardiff the week before. Maybe a bit of complacency set in, who knows? But no, fair play to RGC going down there and getting the win. They should be uh, really happy with themselves. Yeah, I know uh, RGC... Like had a few big performers that made our team of the week. Like I said, Tom Hughes in the centre is obviously um, always a top performer. In the pack as well, you had um, Ethan Fackerel, um, obviously Exeter Cardiff Blues Academy player, and uh, Brody Coglin as well, who, who uh, Dragons Academy player that went off, went off injured in the first half, all put in big performances. So you got to give uh, Kerry Jones credit for that as well, really, taking the, the likes of like Fackerel and uh, Coglin up there, and they seem to be making a difference for them up there. Yeah, obviously, these young players, they need to play, don't they? And um, going up there, a perfect chance for them, and um, got good coach in Kerry Jones who can sort of nurture them and bring them through, and he's uh, reaping the rewards. Moving on to the uh, Western Conference then, and uh, we'll start off with Aberavon, um, another victory for them, coming away 36-15 winners against Bridgen. Uh, what were your thoughts on that one? Yeah, obviously, Bridgen missing... Um, quite a few of their Ospreys boys with this with these A team games now. But um I don't think anyone's too surprised that Aberavon came out on top. They look really good, don't they? I don't think um anyone's ca- will catch them now in um in the Western conference. And you know I'd probably tip them to get to the final to be honest. But yeah, no really good team. And um with Bridgen now they're fourth obviously four teams from both groups go through. So you know they'll be looking over their shoulders at Swansea now who um We'll be looking to catch them. Yeah, I know Aberavon's back row was um, sort of a major um, reason why they won the game. Lloyd Evans, Ashley Evans as well, uh, Ashton Evans, sorry, as well in the back row, um, which is just massive for them. And I think it just caused Bridgend all sorts of problems. When, whenever Bridgend did get front football and they were allowed to play, you had like the likes of Lloyd Evans, Ashton Evans getting in there and stealing the ball, and it just made made it so difficult for for Bridgen to get any sort of platform in the game. Yeah, and like you said, Aberavon squad, like their back row, the depth they've got everywhere in every position is you know, sort of incredible for the Premiership. And even when they rotate, they still look really strong. So, yeah, no, fair play to them. They've built up a good squad. And um, Jason Hyatt be um, licking his lips uh, yeah. of the upcoming season. Yeah, you mentioned the back row. Obviously, that's the like Joe Tomlin Reeves, the club captain, out long term. Hopefully, it shouldn't be too long before we see him back. Lee Pennell wasn't playing last week, but he's coming back in in this week. So yeah, and then obviously any uh, Ospreys youngsters that they could have dropping down as well. So the strength and depth of their back row in particular um, is massive, but across the whole whole squad as well is huge, and they'll only be benefited when they. Um, because you mentioned with Bridgend, with their Ospreys youngsters not dropping down, is the same for Aberavon, wouldn't it? You had um, the likes of Dan Edwards, um, has been doing a great job at, at fly half for them, um, not in the squad, and a few others as well. So, yeah, when they have those boys back in, they they only improve them. Moving on then to uh, Carmarthen v Swansea, and uh, yeah, this was another tight one. Uh, Carmarthen coming away 24-21 winners. Um, Swansea. Really, really close to, to getting a big win over um, over Quinns, who are a good side. Do you think they'll be disappointed, or do you think they'll be pleased with the performance they put in? I think they'll be disappointed. Like it was twenty one all going into the last few minutes of the game, and a, a late kick so Quinns win it. Obviously, a draw would have been good for them in terms of the league table, but you know they're still taking away a point, which you know I think they would have been happy with that before the game. But you know when you draw in in the last minute to to lose it at the death is always tough, isn't it? 
Yeah. And do you think Quinns will be just relieved to to have got that victory? Because we know that Swansea can cause sides, uh, yeah, can cause uh, sides all sorts of problems. So, do you think Quinns, even though it probably looks like an unconvincing victory, it was an unconvincing victory. But do you think they'll just be pleased to have got across the line and got the points for the win? Yeah, at the end of the day, they've got four points on onto the league. So, I know that's what they wanted. You know, a win's a win at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, and we we know how good Quinns are. We look at probably um, the Western Conference and we say probably Aberavon and Clendovery are the two two favourites for that. But I think Quinns on any day can beat either of those sides. Yeah. And so Quinns, when it goes to these playoffs, it'll just be whoever turns up on the day. So I think you can't really write Quinns off, can you? The, the sort of the talent they have, the ex-pros and the youngsters and the ones that have been about in the Premiership for a long time. Quinns still have a real shot of... Um, winning this Prem Cup don't they and yeah, sort of the more wins they have like that hard hard games they were tested by Swansea and they'll probably that'll benefit them more than if they sort of run away by 50 points yeah definitely and you say they've got a chance of winning it I think any team that makes it to the quarterfinals have got a chance of winning it all it takes is one team to have a bad game you know and the underdogs could go through so you never know do you but no I, yeah, they have got a good chance yeah and then it looks like it'll be probably between Swansea and Bridgend then for that for that um, last playoff spot. Um, do you have any idea which way that one's going to go? It's so tight, but if you had to put your money on one of those teams? I'm going to put my neck on the line and I'm going to say Swansea. You know, look at Swansea's last two games, Slanetli and Bridgend. They beat Bridgend earlier on in the season, didn't they? But yeah. Swansea going to have to win both games and I, I'm confident they can do it. Moving on then to the to the last game in the Western Conference last weekend, and Clenetley hosted uh, Clendovery, and probably not a surprise for many. Uh, we know how much Clenetley have struggled. Uh, Clendovery came away 54-12 winners. Uh, what were your thoughts on that one? Yeah, not surprised that Clendovery came out on top, but maybe a little bit surprised at the scoreline. I didn't expect it to be um, you know, that that big. Um, but obviously, we spoke to Nathan Hart in the week, and um, he spoke about Clenetley play for 40 minutes, and then... Um, sort of drop off and it's obviously that's what's happened on on Saturday because it was close to half time and then second half Flandovery just ran away with it. Yeah and obviously that's going to be massive for Flandovery isn't it sort of um, giving them confidence going uh, into these into obviously the last game this weekend and then the playoff uh, after that. Oh yeah definitely and um, they're on a decent run of form you know up there with Aberavon but yeah it'd be interesting to see who they play in the quarterfinals and um uh, maybe a cracker, whoever they play. So uh, after last week's uh, results then, uh, in the Eastern Conference table, uh, Cardiff keep the pressure on Newport, only uh, two points behind them, Newport on 30 points and uh, Cardiff on 28, followed by Merthyr and Pontypridd then, and uh, RGC and then Ebervale. Uh, Ebervale and RGC um, a little bit like f- further off. Obviously, if Ebu can pick up two bonus point wins, um, they can sneak into that fourth fourth position, um, but it does look unlikely. But we know with the with the Welsh Premiership and this cup competition that you can never really write anything off. And uh, well, RGC only two points off Pontypridd in uh, in fifth. So RGC can, if they get a couple of good results, can uh, obviously sneak into that fourth position. Ad, uh, what do you think of that? Do you think uh, RGC or Ebu can sneak in? Yeah, but obviously they're going to need to win both games, aren't they? And um, you know, pick up some bonus points as well. Uh, well, and you'd have to hope that Ponty or Merthyr slip up, wouldn't you? But, you know, it is doable. Stranger things have happened, but I would be surprised if um, that was the case. So would you say those four are sort of the ones you'd expect to be going on to the... Yeah, um... definitely. And uh, in the Western Conference then, Aberavon uh, stay top on 35 points. Clendevery following them all the way though on 33 Kamal and Quinn's then a bit further off on 21, and then Bridgend and Swansea on 13 and 11, respectively, and then Clenetley down the bottom there um, on five points. So, yeah, we obviously mentioned that battle between Bridgend and Swansea um, already. And um, do you think Bridgend just having those extra two points might, might be the difference going into the final two games? Yeah, maybe. And I think a lot of it will come down to tomorrow. If Swansea don't beat Clenetley, then... And yeah. they, you know, they're really struggling to make it. Yeah, that would be a, a big blow for them as well. Obviously, we know Clan Ethley, um do have the quality to to beat them. And 
we hope that they do manage to pick up that win um, somewhere. Obviously, we don't want it to be at Swansea's, Swansea's expense, obviously. But um, I think if Swansea do lose to Tenethley tomorrow, then that'll be a massive blow for them in terms of confidence as well, as in terms of points as well. Yeah, definitely. And um, obviously, Bridget will be looking to beat the every side who um, you know, made a few changes here and there. So there's a good chance for them to pick up a win as well. Yeah. Yes. Moving on to uh, this weekend's fixtures then. And uh, Ebervale host RGC tonight in the Eastern Conference uh, at uh, the Cineglass Community Stadium at Eugene Cross Park. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? I, I really think RGC can go down there and um, and pick up the win. Uh, obviously, they beat Newport last week, Ebervale in a poor run of form. So, yeah, I'd probably tip RGC as favourites to go there and get some in tonight. Yeah, I think I tend to agree with you for that one. Obviously, Ebu have had a, their injury crisis, as we mentioned. They've got a lot of young young boys in their squad again, a lot of Dragons Academy players back, like of Ben Moa, Joe Peer, Joe Westwood playing at, playing at 13. Yeah, they do have a lot of young players. One thing of note as well is Evan Lloyd, the Dragons Academy outside half, is starting at 10 for Rebu, uh, having previously obviously already played for RGC this season. So that'll be a, an interesting matchup, um, and we'll see how he gets on. But then when you look at the, the RGC team, their backs in particular, they seem to have a more settled back line now, uh, like Bagshaw, uh, Tom Hughes, Reese Tudor, players like that. Um, whereas at the start of the the competition. I think Kerry Jones was sort of trying to get a feel for his team. Um, players were going in and out and they were chopping and changing. But I think he, he seems to have a more settled squad now. And I think he knows what his best squad is. So I think RGC coming off the back of that win against Newport as well will be favourites going into that game. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, I think RGC will win that one. And uh, we'll stick with the Friday night games uh, for now then. And uh, we'll just move across to the Western Conference. Uh, the first one, Abraven hosting Kamad and Quinns. Now, uh, that'll be an entertaining one, won't it? Yeah, that'll be a really entertaining game. Um, I'd probably still tip Abraven. Like, you know, they, I'd go out and say they are the best team in the Western Conference. And, you know, the league does show that. You know, Quinns are a decent team as well. But, you know, when you look at Abraven's squad and the strength and depth they've got, you'd have to tip them for a win. But, no, it will be a, it will be a, tight, no, it will be a tough game. And uh, I think it'll be tight as well. Yeah, it will be a tough one. Look at Kamal. We mentioned settled squads. Kamal then's pretty pretty settled as well, really, um, in the in the back line and in the, the forwards as well. You look at like the back row, Lewis Millen, who made our team of the week last last week, uh, like Ed Sigury, players like that. So they got a lot of experience, and I think that will benefit them going into these um, these last uh, couple of games in the cup, and then obviously the playoffs as well. Uh, Aberavon, they're saying that if you look at like Aberavon's front row, likes of like Reese Forsett in there, and then you got like uh, uh, Rowan Jenkins to come off the bench then at loose head. So they're two quality options really, and they've got that almost across the park. Mentioned the back row before, back row trio of Lloyd Evans, who's captain in the side, Andrew Waite and Lee Pennell is sort of as good as you'll get across any any Premiership team really, isn't it? No, definitely, I agree. Yeah, like I said earlier on the strength and depth they've got is, you know, phenomenal for the Premiership, and um, you know, with the squad they've got, they, you know, they're really reaching their potential. Yeah, and that'll definitely be a cracker though. And I think if Carmarthen can pull off, I'm not going to say upset because we obviously know what what Quinns can do. But if Carmarthen can uh, pull off a big victory down at a Talbot Athletic Ground, that'll sort of um, send a, a shockwave through the league and show that Aberavon sort of aren't this. Um, invincible team obviously they have already lost once this season but um it'll just show the rest of the league that they are a beatable team and i think that'll really damage our Bravin's confidence going into the um into the playoffs so they'll be really desperate not to uh not to slip up this weekend and then moving on to the second game we spoke about it a little bit already Bridgend hosting Land um i think if, if you look at this one uh look at the table look at results you think Land uh are due a big away win but um, where when we talk about Bridgend, obviously Bridgend have competed in every game and got the uh, victory uh, when they travelled to Flandre earlier in the season. Ad, uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, um, it's an interesting one, really. Like on paper, you probably tip Flandre for the win. Bridgend have already beaten them this season, and um, 
Yeah, Bridgend know that if they win these last two games, they'll be in the top four qualifying. So it was a massive game for them. And, you know, they'll be going in with confidence, I think, at home. Yeah, and we mentioned already as well, Flandovery uh, have rotated quite a lot of their side, um, which is, it's, it's good and bad, really. Obviously, you don't want a, a two, to disrupt the side too much. But the players they've got coming in are like some er- er- very experienced players, sorry, um, that have been around in, in the Premiership for a while. So sort of maybe not their first choice uh, players at the moment, and particularly when you have like some of the Scarlet's boys dropping down. But it is a strong team still, and um, maybe giving them some game time now, if they have to drop in further up the line in the playoffs or in the Premiership season uh, coming up next year now, um, I think it will benefit the squad long term. So I think uh, Aros has uh, been very smart with his uh, team selection. I think, um, yeah, he's done the right thing by sort of blooding some new players now. And I think even if they do uh, lose to Bridgen, they're obviously still gonna still gonna be in the playoff places. So they still have a massive chance. Yeah, like they still they've got a guaranteed home semi final anyway, uh, quarter final. Sorry. So yeah. yeah, they might as well rotate now whilst they're already through. And uh, moving back uh, to the East Conference then and to the Saturday games, uh, both kicking off at 1pm, obviously uh, brought forward for the so we don't clash with the Wales-Australia game. Uh, first of all, uh, Merthyr v Newport then at the win. Now, uh, that'll be a big game, won't it? Yeah, well, obviously Merthyr coming off the back of a phenomenal result last week. Newport coming off the back of a disappointing one, but knowing they're going to need to sort of win to you know, keep top spot. So, yeah, it'll be a really close one. I really don't know which way that will go. No, I know if you look at um, Newport's back line, um, I think you got three or four ex Wales Sevens players in there. Uh, like Will Talbot Davis, uh, obviously ex Dragons player, uh, dropping in on the wing, um, who's I, I thought was like brilliant when he played for the Dragons. He maybe wasn't the, the quality that um, some of the other wingers are there. But he certainly does offer um, a lot. Obviously, he's experienced at fullback as well, so he's good in the air. Scored some good, brilliant tries when he was at the Dragons. Good finisher. But like to Dav Smith as well. Um, this uh, been around really. Obviously, signed for Forever Vale start of the season that was curtailed due to COVID. Then signed for Cardiff start of this season. <laughs> now he's ended up at Newport. Uh, you've got like Owen Jenkins on the wing then as well. So they got real gas in their back line, really. Um, yeah, pace. And uh, they, could, they can really hurt Merthyr, I think, out wide. We've spoke about Merthyr's back line as well in the past. Uh, but I think those three in particular, combined with the likes of um, like Matt O'Brien and Will Reed, Will Reed's back in at, at 10, so that 10-12 combination's back. I think that's a really exciting uh, back line. I can't wait to see how they get on against Merthyr on the weekend. And then, well, if you look at Merthyr's team as well, then you, you know that their um, strength is going to be their, their back five, really, their back row and uh, their second rows. Um, you've got, like, Paddy McBride's dropped into the second row. Uh, he's a big unit, so, um, yeah, he, he carries hard, but obviously because he plays in the back row as well, he, he is good over the ball as well. So I think that's a, a good thing for them to have. If you look at their bench as well, so you've got, like, Callum Bradbury's been dropped to the bench when you have him coming on late in the game, uh, probably add a bit more stability to their line-out than, uh, than Paddy, McBride, Paddy McBride will as well. So I think it will be a, a clash of styles, really. I think Merthyr will try and win the game up front, as, as they normally do. And I think Newport, if you look at their team selection, I think they'll just be going to throw the ball around and sort of play some really entertaining rugby. And moving on to the last game in the Eastern Conference end, and uh, Pontypridd hosting Cardiff at Sardis Road. Uh, big uh, derby, obviously. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, really looking forward to that one. I'll be there. Uh, this is a perfect game for Ponty to bounce back. You know, obviously a really disappointing result last week. But this is the game they'll want to win. Cardiff at home. It'll hopefully be a good crowd at Sardis Road. Um, so, yeah, really looking forward to it. And, um, I'm, you know, I'm actually quite confident that Ponty might be able to nick that. That's a big statement. That's a big statement. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but we know, obviously, what Ponty breathe. Um the quality they have in their squad, obviously some young, exciting backs, um, some young young forwards as well, actually, um, with a good mix of um, 
some experienced players as well. But I was looking through the Cardiff team earlier, and even though they're missing a few of their uh, first choice players, they still got some some really good talent in in their squad. Like look at the back row, like Alex Everett starting at seven this week, uh, Alan Lawrence and Sam Moore. Um, obviously, I mentioned Abra Avon's back row being as good as sort of what you get in the Premiership. I think this is pro- this probably matches it, if not better as it. Um, few a uh, few changes in the back line uh, as well. Um, so I think it'll be quite hard to like sort of put a mark on where this Cardiff team will be because we know how much Cardiff um, sort of rotate their squad and your, your players coming in and out from the academy and from, from the first team setup. So, but it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to affect them too much. I think whatever team Cardiff put out, um, uh, look dominant in most games they play. And I don't know whether that's um, having these players dropping down from, from regional rugby, whether that's just because they're so much better than players playing in the Premiership, or whether it's a confidence thing. Obviously, mm. if you're you're dropping down into the Premiership, you're you're going to be very confident that you can uh, get the better of your opposite man. So, I think that's what sort of Pontypridd have to have to overcome, really. But it, it's easy for you to for your motive like for that to be a motivation and that for that to drive you. Mm. Um, we mentioned last time Ponty played played Cardiff at um, Cardiff Farms Park. Obviously, we all went down to that game, and even though Cardiff came away with the victory in the end, Ponty did make him work for everything. And we spoke to Chris Dickamidi simply after the game, and he said, "Fair play, like Ponty breathe. They were up for it. They and they did like the best they could. And I think, yeah, again, we'll reiterate what we said that week: is any of these young." Want to breathe back, so we've got something to prove. They'll be sort of relishing the opportunity to go up against some of some regional players, won't they? Yeah, definitely. But no, um, and Ponty have got a young squad in fairness now, but I just feel as if the home advantage up at Sardis, hopefully, like I said, be a good crowd up there, could might be able to um inspire Ponty to the win. Yeah, that will be massive actually. And that's another thing we mentioned as well at Cardiff Farms Park was the travelling support from Ponty breathe. It was like a home game. For them there, so uh, yeah, we all know what um, what traveling to Sardis Road is uh, is like, and is, it'll be very hostile, and obviously that that extra bit more as well, with it being a, a big derby with the uh, with the city boys coming to uh, coming to town. So I think that'll be a very entertaining one as well. Probably probably a little bit feisty as well. Mm-hmm. Moving on to the final game of the of the weekend then, and uh, back to the Western Conference and Llanelli hosting Swansea in a. Uh, Bottom of the table clash in the Western Conference. Uh, Thanetley, will they pick up their first win against Swansea uh, tomorrow? Yes or no? No. <laughs> Why? Um, Swansea need to win, don't they? I think this will be Thanetley's best chance. They did run Bridgen quite close back in um, September, didn't they? Yeah. But I think this is their best chance to get a win now. But I just, I just can't see it. Unfortunately for them, I, I just feel like Swansea will be missing. Well, both teams are missing a lot of players because the Ospreys are playing the Scarlet tonight, aren't they? In the yeah. 18 game. So the players who would usually be playing for Swansea and Athlete aren't. Um, but no, I, I just feel as if Swansea have got a little bit more. But like playing at, playing at home at Park Scarlet might give them a little bit of an advantage, but I just can't see them winning. And this is going to come back and age really badly. Isn't it? <laughs> I, I just can't see them winning. Yeah, I think. Do you think the sort of the jeopardy now that Swansea have got um, that they'll be, if it was only obviously the top two still, you probably think the Swansea aren't gonna. But I don't think it's mathematically possible for them for them to make the top two. So obviously they wouldn't have anything to play for in that game. So do you think the jeopardy now of they've got something to play for or something to lose um, will make them a little bit more motivated and sort of if they didn't have that, then it'd be a bigger opportunity for Thnathli to pick up that win. Yeah, definitely. Like, they won't need any more motivation because it's a local derby. But knowing if they win tomorrow, it sets up a sort of winner takes all clash with Bridgen the following week. Yeah. That'll be all the motivation they need. And that's why I think they'll go on and win it. Yeah. And obviously, we, we mentioned that Saint are probably favourites against Bridgen. So, yeah, it is massive for Swansea. If they get that win, they can, can leapfrog them, can't they? So, 
yeah, it, it's a massive game, definitely. And uh, we'll look forward to that um, as well. Yeah, and obviously you mentioned it, it then as well. Obviously, some of the players are playing for the, the regional teams tonight, the A-teams. Uh, yeah, how good is that to see sort of these squads of players that have been uh, sort of cutting their teeth in the Premiership mostly? I know there's a few um, like first choice uh, like senior players dropping down as well to play in them. But how good is it to, to see these players playing um, sort of all together as one? And uh, yes, yeah, big opportunity for them, isn't it, to show what they can do uh, in a regional setting? Yeah, it's great. Like if you look at, say, the Ospreys team for tonight, I'd say about 90% of them are probably featured in the Premiership at some point this season. You know, it's a shame for the Premiership clubs missing their players, you know, big games coming up for them. But obviously, you can understand why the regions have done it, just get all their players playing together. I think, obviously, this is way above um, way above our, our pay grade. But um, And I, I, I've never played in, in an academy structure. Neither of us have. But I think from a, a premiership and regional supporters' point of view, I think these young boys play in the majority of their rugby in the premiership with a, with a couple of A games mixed in. Is probably what I, I would think is the best for them, a for them to develop, and from a supporters' point of view as well, because it's good to see these players playing in the Premiership. Good to see the players that come, as well from other teams and play in the Premiership, and then good to see them go go up against each other. And I think, obviously, you mentioned this is a way above our pay grade, but I think it's a more satisfying, um, more satisfying way for everybody like that. Yeah, I think it's perfect to be honest. I think they need a mix between A games. And um, premiership games, premiership games, you know, they've got more on them. They're proper league games. You know, if you lose, everyone's gutted. But with with the A-team games, it is sort of just like a hit out for them. Yeah. But I'm not sure how different the standard between both of them would be. But you feel as if with the A-team games, I, I mean, it's, it's against like-minded players, I suppose. Sort of young professional players. And um yeah, it's good for them to like gel together playing for the same team. But yeah, playing in the Premiership is great for them purely for the um, for the competitiveness and knowing, you know, you can't you've got to win. You know, losing is yeah. not really an option. All right, uh, that's a wrap for this episode. Then uh, obviously with two games uh, left to go in in the Welsh Prem Cup and then the playoffs. Things things are heating up. So uh, thanks for joining me again, Ad. Uh, and we'll be back again with another weekly preview show next. Friday. Uh, if you haven't already checked it out, uh, go and watch our uh, podcast with Nathan Hart from Natalie Back Rower from Wednesday. Um, we, uh, we speak to some guests every every other Wednesday, so next one will be out a week next Wednesday. Uh, so keep an eye on our social medias uh, for announcement on guests uh, come in. Just want to say a massive congratulations as well to Javan Sebastian. Uh, Ex uh, Premiership player as well, uh, obviously with the uh, Kamad and Quinns. Ex player as well with Kamad on Athletic, and uh, obviously currently at the Scarlets on his uh, being selected for the Scotland team tomorrow. And uh, so go well, Javan. Uh, if you also look at our website, there's a interview with Javan that uh, Tobias did uh, a few months ago. So yeah, if you wanted to check that out, sort of get to know Javan and. Uh, like sort of uh, see the, the type of bloke that he is uh, now that he's uh, international or will be an international rugby player and uh, thank you to our sponsors uh, Lekker Foods Co as well who are sponsoring all these weekly preview shows uh, yeah so that's a wrap for today uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next week